Oh, hey, this is awkward. You've just caught me reading a book. Yep, it's just something I do from time to time. It's a bit of a hobby of mine. Jokes aside, good news. I've actually started reading again. <laughs> you probably noticed on my channel over the last, like, couple of months that I haven't done a whole lot of videos on books that I'm actually currently reading. And I've always said that's because I'm a mood reader and I only read when I feel like it. And that's not going to change. But the thing is, I actually read a bit more than I talk about on my channel. Whether it's uh, me like reading the start of something and DNFing it, uh, or me kind of reading something that I was very meh about. I didn't have a lot of opinions and I didn't really get anything from the book. I tend to not really mention them in videos. That's kind of something I want to change in 2019. And mainly because I'm really going to try to be a bit more critical in my reading. And a lot of people tend to think that means I'm going to be looking for flaws when I say being critical, but really I just mean trying to identify talking points from a lot of writing that could be considered either good or bad, or maybe even in the middle. I'm going to try to talk a bit more about stuff that I don't have a whole lot of an opinion on, but really trying to find maybe the reason why that is, or just basically trying the book review better is what I'm going to be trying to do in 2019. And that's not to say that I think my book reviews in the past have been bad. I think I've always been, or at least recently on my channel, I feel like I've been doing book reviews all right in that I talk in depth about the stuff I like and in depth about the stuff I don't like. But this year I'm going to be trying to improve on that even more. Also, can I just say thank you to the people that made the Netflix show you as a skinny white a bookish guy that happens to be single. I just want to say thanks for probably making it even fucking harder now to find a girlfriend because they're all, <laughs> they're probably all going to think that uh, dudes like me are creepy stalkers now. Thanks for that. I'm joking, of course. Hey, are you following me on Instagram yet? Well, you should be. You're missing content like this. Wow, that's good content. Hashtag not a bookstagram. So something kind of funny happened <laughs> during the month of January. I somewhat inadvertently went into a bit of a readathon. Here's what happened. Around the very start of January, I watched the movie A Dog's Purpose. Great movie, a lot of feels. I cried. It was a great movie, very enjoyable. I cried. But I was aware at the time that it was based on a book, and that was really interesting to me, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to read the book. Looking up the book online, it actually reminded me that I had another dog themed book in my TBR, a book called The Art of Racing in the Rain, and I decided, hey, I'm going to read that straight after A Dog's Purpose. I was really excited to do that. So far, I haven't finished uh, The Art of Racing in the Rain yet, but about a quarter of the way through that book, I remembered that I'd also wanted to reread a book that I really enjoyed from last year called Waiting for Doggo. Now, this is a book I've mentioned on this channel quite a few times uh, for a very particular reason, and it's the reason that I want to reread it, and that is that this book was very enjoyable and very charming, and yet, looking back on it, it's still somewhat forgettable. There wasn't a whole lot of complexity to the characters, including the dog, obviously, I mean. <laughs> and yet, I still found them extremely likable, and I still found myself wanting to follow their journey. The plot of the book itself is very, very light and very standard. Somewhat predictable, not a whole lot of risk or danger or confrontation in this book whatsoever. By all intents and purposes, this book shouldn't have been that enjoyable. It's extremely light on plot. The characters don't have a whole lot of depth. The relationship between the man and the dog was actually really good, and I think that's part of the reason why it was so enjoyable. Anyway, this video isn't a book review for this book. That's something I'll do later in the month. I just wanted to basically tell you that the reason I'm rereading this is because I want to go through it again and be a bit more critical. I want to see if I can find the real reason that I enjoyed this book so much, despite being something that I would normally not enjoy. Somehow, I have inadvertently gotten myself into a dog-themed readathon in January. I'm sure you can imagine that Bonnie is extremely pissed off at me in the moment. She... I'm sorry, okay? Jesus. But yeah, towards the end of January, I'm really excited to do a video kind of giving some in-depth reviews about all three of those books. I was going to do them separately, but at this point it's already pretty late in the month, so I figured I would just do one 
long video. It would more than likely end up being a, like a 30 minute video, probably, maybe even a bit more. I'm not too sure. But so far, I have a lot to talk about with, uh, you know, a dog's purpose and what I've read of the art of racing in the rain already. I have quite a lot of talking points. What I will say so far, and again, I'm not doing a book review in this video, but with a dog's purpose, comparison of the book to the movie, in almost all cases, obviously, it's a cliche that the book is always better than the movie. But in this instance, it is even more so because although I really enjoyed the movie, it was pretty campy. It was a, it was like a feel good family movie that makes you think about love and family, that kind of stuff. That's fine. That's completely fine, obviously. But a lot of the depth of the book is lost in that movie. I mean, I didn't realize until reading the book that the title, A Dog's Purpose, it's quite literally trying to sculpt a narrative through the eyes of a dog, which is an interesting spin about the purpose of life and finding purpose and how we sometimes attach the purpose of life to things that are pretty simple. There's just a lot to unpack there and I'm excited to talk about that in a full video. So that takes us to February and I don't normally do TBRs, like I said, I'm a mood reader. I just pick up whatever book I feel like picking up at the time. But I'm going to do an exception during the month of February. A few booktubers that I genuinely enjoy are doing a readathon called Blackathon. Now their readathon sounds incredible, sounds amazing, and I would encourage anyone who enjoys doing readathons to do it. I'm not going to do it, and that is just because I just don't do readathons. I just, for the reasons I mentioned before, I just don't like having a strict schedule and time to read a set kind of list or category of books. I've tried it a number of times, and it's just never been an experience that I've enjoyed. There's always a bit of pressure with it that I just, I don't like. Although I'm not doing the readathon, again, a readathon, I would encourage you to look into doing. I'll leave a link in the description below if that's something you enjoy. Although I'm not doing the readathon, I am going to do something that I tend to not do. And that is that I will be actively picking books from my <laughs> super long and perpetual list of TBR. There is a very extensive list of books that I want to read and most of which I've picked up and are in the bookshelf that I've just never gotten around to because I didn't feel like it at the time and it's just, it's just become a thing. <laughs> but during February, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the few out of that uh, TBR that are written about black characters or about or by black authors. Like I said, any other time of the year, I, I don't categorize my reading by the identity of the authors involved. I don't really like, personally, again, this is just personal, I don't really like taking a step back looking at it and saying, well, this much percentage was written by uh, white people, this much percentage was written by Asian people, this much percentage by black people. I just don't like doing that. It feels, it feels like I'm reading particular books to make a point, and that's just not me. I just, I pick up books if the blurb is interesting and if I feel like reading it at that time, and Nine times out of ten, I don't even know who the author is. A lot of the books I've read in the past, probably primarily short stories because I read a ton of them, I have no idea how many of them were white or otherwise, I, I genuinely don't know. All of the creative artists I've met in my life, uh, black or otherwise, have always wanted their work uh, well, picked up or appreciated on the merit of the work itself. Now again, I want to make it clear that people... Uh, who make an active effort to read from a diverse range of authors, that's not a practice I disagree with. Diversity is obviously important, absolutely. And if tomorrow I found out that all of the books I read in 2018 were written by white people, I would be pretty shocked, but I don't think that's the case. And it's just not something I usually look into because all that matters to me is the story. That's all. I don't know. I don't want to make it a whole political thing, right? But like I said, during the month of February, I'm going to be actively uh, reading books that are by uh, black authors or about black characters, obviously for Black History Month. Comes at a pretty good time, actually, because I've been wanting to, since last year, read a lot of the classics that I read during high school, because I haven't really read any classics recently. But around the time of high school, I read a lot, and I'm wanting to reread them now now that, well, the way I read books and the way I interpret books and the way I talk about them is so different to back then. And I'm super curious to see if rereading some of these books is going to create a different experience. So one of those is The Three Musketeers. This one is by Alexandre Dumais, a French author who I respect a lot. He's kind of in the same vein as Jules Verne, another French author. 
because they write about this kind of larger than life adventure that is almost always rooted in some very real science or very real history. So Alexandre de May was uh, the son to a Frenchman and a woman who was a slave from African descent. So I believe if it's important to you, Alexandra himself was like a quarter African. I'm not too sure, but he is considered pretty important in the ranks of uh, classic literature, not just because his stories are so fantastic, but because he was one of the first or only people back then writing such popular fiction as someone with African descent. I just want to read you the, the back of this um, Three Musketeers book just here, because this is one of the just best bits of the book, and it's not really a spoiler, but it's like a goosebumps bit in the book. It gives you goosebumps. They walked arm in arm, occupying the whole width of the street and taking in every musketeer they met, so that in the end it became a triumphal march. The heart of D'Artagnan swam in delirium. He marched between Arthos and Porthos, pressing them tenderly. I know, it's fantastic. I just love, uh, like, brotherhood books. The next one is a reread also, and that's a book that needs no introduction. It's The Hate You Give. And the reason I want to reread it is because the time I read it, which was a couple of years ago, was still around the time where I was forcing myself through massive TBRs every month. And it was so, you know, stressful thinking to myself, like, I need to have this TBR video out on time, blah, blah, blah. It was just silly stuff that now reflecting back on it, I know isn't important, but I read it during a month where I think I read like five other books, which is a ton for me. <laughs> That's a shit ton for me. Um, but I really don't feel like I gave it the amount of concentration and again, critical attention that it deserved. So I'm looking forward to going back and rereading that. I'm sure I don't need to tell you what The Hate You Give is about. I mean, that book has been all over booktube for years and still is and continues to be that obviously it uh, centralizes around themes of racially motiva motivated violence and then lastly if i have the time I, again i just don't know how much reading i'm going to do in february especially because the three musketeers is massive like it doesn't look that big right but it is nearly 700 pages and the font is tiny it's practically a bible but if i have time i also want to read the book Follow the Rabbit Proof Fence, which is an indigenous Australian book set around the time that a lot of Aboriginal t children were being taken from Aboriginal communities to be given white education or Western education. And the story follows three, and mind you, this is based on a true story, fucking incredible true story. The story follows uh, three young Aboriginal girls following this fence to go all the way home back to their community after escaping from that place. It's across Western Australia and mind you is about 1600 kilometers. I know you Americans use a weird metric system so you can do the translation yourself but 1600 kilometers is, it's an amount that I literally cannot fathom walking. But yeah, I haven't read the book um, but I've seen the movie which is, you know, obviously incredibly sad. But another reason I want to read it and I probably still will, it, it just may end up being outside of February but um, the eldest of those three girls, who was 14 at the time, she's actually in real life. Well, I mean, it's all real life, but you, you know what I'm saying. She has passed away at the age of 87 just recently. But yeah, I think that's a story that would be really interesting to read through for the finer details that the movie wouldn't have been capable of touching on. So yeah, that's it. That's what I'm reading in January, what I will be reading in February. I'll probably be doing individual book review videos for the books I read next month, but this month, like I said, I'm just going to do one long video at the end of January, wrapping up those three dog-themed books. Shit, she's still... I'm sorry! Thanks for watching, my cat has me hostage. I hope you liked the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya.